Okay, we are going to walk through our FireNote app uh, and try to give you uh, a real overview of the entire thing and, and even write uh, little bits of it. So uh, the FireNote uh, directory structure is similar to the notebook directory structure, but it's a little different. Um, we do have a, a directory for Glide because we are using Glide to uh, display our images. Um, our model, we had, a, we had a database and a model a directory. This has been simplified a little bit. We just have our, our one uh, note object in our model. Then we have our view, and a lot of these classes are going to be the same, uh, in some cases the exact same as in FireNote as they were in Notebook. And then we have our, our sort of global uh, classes, you know, main activity, of course, uh, view model, of course, and then uh, the authentication uh, um, module, which interacts with Firestore authentication, the storage uh, module, which interacts with Firestore storage, and there's a separate video on that. And then also our uh, database helper. So we had a version of this for SQLite that was um, very simple. And then there was sort of a bunch of SQLite code. And now um, all the code for interacting with the database is in this, uh, for, for the Firestore database, is in this uh, helper, helper routine. So that we don't need um, uh, the sort of lowest level um, uh, code because the uh, Firebase um, API is at a higher level than, than some of the SQLite stuff. Okay, so let's let's start out with main activity and just sort of take a look through. There are a lot of things in main activity we'll recognize from any app. We have a view model, of course, great. This is how we initialize it. We also do have an authentication object, and we do need to uh, initialize the authentication object from the main activity. And this is uh, you know sort of a little bit of a compromise, but the reason that we do this is because the authentication object needs to call start activity for result. Actually, does it just need to call a uh, start activity? Uh, let's take a look in here. Um, no, 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 no. I think we need to. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, we need we need start activity for result. So because uh, we're calling start activity for result, uh, we need to uh, have a reference to the activity, and so we are initializing the auth object not in the view model because the view model doesn't want to know about activities. It doesn't want to know about fragments. That's sort of the separation of concerns. And so um, the auth object takes in uh, this main activity. Um, most of this you will recognize from our working with Firebase authentication. Not a lot uh, to see here, but you know we are calling start activity for result and we are using uh, this particular results code, okay? Um, and then uh, we cache the authentication information and the view model is going to get this cached authentication information, you know, our UID uh, from here. And this, this code is, is all uh, similar to the, the um, authentication code you've seen before. But the one twist here now is that our on activity for result actually needs that request code because there are two different kinds of activities we're starting, one of which is uh, to take a picture and the other of which is to do authentication sign-in. And so we just need to distinguish those two. And you know, here they are. Okay, so that's authentication. And then we also um, initialize our view model with a reference to the storage object. As I said before, uh, we saw the storage before. So let's, uh, let's go into the view model a little bit. The view model is similar to the notebook view model and that is it, it is an Android view model. So it has this reference to an application. It gives us this application context. It's kind of useful to get the storage directory. If you recall, sort of all of the hassle we had in terms of taking pictures for the notebook app, we still have those. Uh, we have to pass this URI, we have to give uh, dynamic permissions. We do that and then we upload that uh, local file to uh, the cloud storage. So we have to do sort of all the work we did before, uh, and then we don't just store a reference in our local SQLite database, we actually have to upload the file. 
So that's there. And then, um, you know, we, um, ex we um, export our uh, notes list using live data. And that is going to enable us um, in the notebook app, we had this model where we were caching the contents of the database in memory. And then when we had updates, we updated the database, we updated the memory, everything was fine. That is a fine way to build an app. Um, however, uh, another way to, to build an app, it, or it's, it's not so good to do that in the cloud case because there's um, a larger window where your local view is going to be different from the cloud view. And uh, one thing we want to enable in our app is the possibility of having uh, multiple users update data and uh, those updates to be seen, you know, seen by other users. So basically communication through data. And if you are going to have the data in the database change, through some other uh, user doing something, live data is the perfect way of saying, hey, whenever this thing changes, let me know. I'm going to display this live data in my app. And if the user updates it, I will refresh my live data. And if some other user updates this or an administrator updates this, I will also get a live data and the uh, views will, will adjust uh, automatically. So that's what we're doing with the notes list. Um, I mentioned the expanded state. Um, uh, I'll talk about this more when I talk about navigation, but basically any state you have in your view should be considered temporary uh, because if you push a fragment and then uh, pop a fragment, the system can uh, destroy your, your um, local variables. And so you shouldn't store anything in local variables. So we store our expanded list in the view model here. Uh, we could have done this in notebook, but I thought it was kind of uh, instructive uh, to, to, to see the difference. And I'll, 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 I'll have a whole video that, that compares them directly. Let's try to you know, keep this at a, at a higher level. I'm talking to myself more than anyone else. So you'll see uh, there's a lot of similarity between the view model in Notebook and the view model uh, here. Um, uh, the big difference is how we interact with the database. And so let's skip to the view model database helper because that is the part of the view model uh, that, that interacts with the database. And if you recall from Notebook, we also tried to split this out. We split this off, and there was a little bit artificial because this uh, this layer did not so much. There was an underlying SQLite layer that did most of the work, but here we actually are doing the work of, of uh, interacting with the cloud. Let's take a look at this uh, view model uh, database helper. Um, so uh, you know we have this this uh, uh, notes list, which is a mutable live data, and where you're getting past it in the beginning so that we can fetch our notes uh, as soon as we start. And, uh, oh, that's interesting. I should have also refetched the notes after uh, my authentication finished. That's why I didn't get an initial, um, when I did the demo of the uh, of FireNote, the initial contents didn't show up at first because, yeah, I, uh, I fetched the notes um, during initialization, but not after authentication. Okay, detail. Um, I have a, uh, uh, I, I, I love this term ellipsize, which uh, I discovered you can put in your XML and it, it, it does this sort of thing to a string. So it, it gives you part of the string and it attaches an ellipsis to it. So, um, and if, it, if the string is small enough, it doesn't, you don't even need to do that. So this is just uh, printing for my own debugging uh, edification. Okay, so um, for all of these functions, you know, fetch, update, uh, create, I'm passing in a live data, a mutable live data. And so, you know, you should be wondering why. Um, and so uh, let's take a look at what fetching does. So I've got a reference, so it's DB. Reference is this Firestore database uh, reference. Sorry, well, yeah, Firestore is the name of the database. So it's this Firestore database reference. 
it's a global object. And then, uh, you know, we can get a collection. And remember, uh, for the there's a sort of a path name, but the path name starts with a collection, then it has a document, then it has a collection, then it has a document, collection, document. So we start with the collection name. Our collection name is all notes. And then we are asking for documents based on a query. So we're saying, hey, please give me the following uh, in order of timestamp. And I think by default, this is uh, ascending timestamp. Only give me 100 of these because I don't want to get overwhelmed. And then get, which is you know sort of query. Um, and in the SQLite case, we would get a cursor back. And in uh, the Firestore database, we are going to get this result object back. Uh, you know, what is result? It's a query snapshot. So that, that's the uh, database equivalent of a cursor. So uh, on success listener, uh, you know, say something like, hey, I succeeded, that's great. Um, and then, and, you know, print something about it. And then here is the uh, why I passed in the mutable live data, because um, if I am, if I want to refetch the notes, then what I'm saying to my app is at some point in the future, when this result comes back, update the live data. And at that point, the view will reflect that live data. And so in that sense, I don't have to call anybody back once, once this, uh, once this um, fetch succeeds. I'm not calling anybody. I'm just updating live data. So you're going to see this in, in every case. You know, I, I have this live data object that um, gets updated, uh, and then the view can um, at some future point. And that's why sometimes you know you add the image, and then sort of you go back to a different view, and it takes a minute for that image to sort of pop up. That's because we're waiting for the, the live data update to post. Um, okay, up, up, uh, update note. We're actually going to write some code, so I'll, I'll get to that in one second. Um, oh, and even even here. So let's just do let's do remove note. So remove note. Uh, we get a note, and we get a. Um, we also get our live data, and in this case, we are saying, hey, uh, in this all notes directory, let's grab a document. So this is you know this is a collection. This is a document. Uh, in order to grab a document, we need to give the ID of the document. And uh, you know, I'm sorry. Let's let's just head over to our uh, model section for one minute, just so that we 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 know what a note looks like. So um, again, you know, we have um, th this idea of the on storage representation of a note and the in memory representation of a note. This note object is the in memory representation, and so it has like this list of the UUIDs. That's something that exists in memory because the actual UUIDs uh, refer to these uh, uh, objects in, in the, the, the database, uh, in the file system, in the cloud file system. Okay, but I've got a name, I've got a, an owner UID, so I've got this authentication information that I didn't have in Notebook, which I, I could have had in Notebook if I wanted to support multiple users, but you know, that's, a, that's another issue. I have the text of the note, um, I have this list, uh, you know, which uh, I'm, I'm constructing that has that refers to uh, the cloud file system. I have a timestamp that the server assigned. And then I have this node ID. And this node ID is sort of the primary key. And in the SQLite case, it was an integer. Here, it's a string. Um, and so um, if I want to delete this note, I'm going to tell, I'm going to identify the, uh, the sort of file name is the note ID. And I'm going to tell Firestore to delete it. And I've got a success and a failure listener that just basically says, like, hey, did this work or did this not work? Okay. So where does this ID come from? So that's a good question. So when we create a note, and I'll show you sort of where this is called later, but um, we actually create the entire object, but we don't assign the note ID. Um, because that is something that uh, um, we are going to use uh, Firestore to do. So note, dot, note ID. So uh, what we're going to do is we are going to ask Firebase. So I should have you know, put the string, made it a constant somewhere. Um, so I've got uh, this collection 
this is a, um, so this is, yeah, so this is sort of like a directory. And then in this directory, I'm going to want to create a document. And I want the ID for that document. Okay, so um, this is telling Firebase, hey, can you generate a document ID for me? And under the covers, I'm not really sure what's going on, but I suspect there's some randomness going on because anyone who wants to generate a document ID can, and, and we are gonna see that we can then assume that those IDs don't conflict at the server. The best way to achieve that is, is randomness uh, to do it in a distributed way. So, but the thing is I didn't want, I wanted to do this um, sort of inside the database helper because this call is a database call. And the database is the one that is generating the, this ID. I, I'm not calling, you know, um, external. Uh, we call this UUID function, which generates our own random uh, user ID. That's sort of on us. This is on Firebase because Firebase might be generating its ID using other metadata or other information. And so we don't. We want to respect that and use their published uh, API, and not just assume that it's random and generate our own random ID. So we generate this ID, and then if we want to create this note, we say, uh, this is the directory. We want to create this note with this identifier. And um, you can look up, there's sort of, there are different, there's a, there's sort of an, an add uh, routine which does this in one step, but uh, we're in this funny case where we want the ID to be both the file name and contents of the file. So let's take a quick look at that. So we saw that this um, when we were looking at the um, at the data model, but we weren't really paying attention to it. Here you can see this is a collection, and the first item in this collection starts with you know five h six, and the note ID also starts with five h six. This note ID is a field that holds its own file name. So it's, it's not that mind blowing. I mean, you can, you know, you, you could also store like, the, the, we stored the path name uh, in, in, the, uh, uh, in the image object and that path name is, is related to the actual path. So we've seen this trick before, but you know, you, you, you definitely want to be hip to what's going on here. You know, this is uh, dr2 and the node ID is dr2. And this, again, this, this uh, identifier is created by uh, Firebase's um, ID algorithm, which, which you know we use as a black box. So we want to create this note. So collection uh, note uh, given this ID, uh, set the note, and that sets uh, the all the um, um, contents of the note, which is the um, key value pairs. On success, uh, on failure, listener, which we just uh, um, um, log, and then. We do like like everything. All of our interactions with the database, um, our sort of mantra is: if we we're going to change the state of the database, once we have finished changing the state, please update this live data. And that allows this decoupled way where there's going to be some portion of our code, the view, which just subscribes to changes to this live data, whatever it says, it displays it, and we have a very nice decoupling. Uh, that part doesn't have to know the details of the callbacks and what's going on in order to talk to Firebase. Everything is is handled by live data, which which we like. Okay, so let's create note, and then you know just to just to get in here a little bit. Um, oh, actually, you know, and first let me let me just show you. Uh, so let's see a usage of create note. So. Um, this is from within the view model, and the view model gets passed, uh, you know, by by some uh, client code, which is uh, taking data from the user, uh, the new text for the note, and the list of picture UUIDs, and then it creates this note object, and it uses, you know, this is the view model, so it knows, you know, the, the intimate details of what we're doing. It uses the authentication object to get the display name. It uses the authentication object to get the UID. Uh, it sets the text, which is ultimately coming from the user, and this uh, list of picture IDs. 
And then I just have a comment here that says the node ID is actually set in this database health because I sort of view it as part of the, the database interaction, not so much the, the view model interaction. Okay, so let's go back here. Um, yeah, so we want to write this node. And so, um, okay, so we are going to grab the picture UID. And where am I? I'm here. Uh, oh, no, that's fine. Sorry, sorry. Uh, oh, here, here I am. Okay. So, wait, update note. Uh, oh, I already thought, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, let me, I'm sorry. Let me, let me look at, uh, let me look over here. New model. Dun, dun, dun. Hmm. I don't know what was, I don't quite know what was going on there. So uh, to update a note, so creating a note is kind of a pain because uh, we have to make sure that we have the right note ID. But when we're updating a note, that note ID is already set because we're only updating a note that we've gotten from the database. And so in this case, uh, in, uh, this note has been, uh, the text has been updated, the list of picture U, U, UIDs has been updated. And so we're grabbing a reference to that uh, list of UUIDs really just so we can print some information about it. But all we need to do is uh, sort of the same thing that we did when we created the note. We grab the right collection, we grab the right document, and we set the new document to the, the, new, um, the new value. Which, which is passed in. And then uh, if we succeed, we uh, tell our uh, live data, hey, we've succeeded. All right, so that's update. Oh yeah, for some reason I'm, I'm missing, I'm missing the, uh, yeah, I, I'm missing the, the sort of, um, well, you know, it, we can, we can uh, you know, collection and uh, notes, collection and then um, you know the document and that's uh, note, dot, uh, note ID and then we want to accept um, and yeah there we go uh, or is it, is it, is it, no it's not uh, oh oh I need to pass it the note yeah there you go okay so I'll tell you the note. So this is, now Now let's recall, all of this is sort of the details of interacting with the database. So let's go back to the view model because there's some other, there's some, uh, a couple of higher level things that uh, in terms of how we interact with the database uh, that we'll remember from, from notebook. Um, so uh, this is interacting with the database. And of course, you know, observing the note list is, is the easy part. This is the live data that, that keeps getting updated. And, you know, we have a couple of things in here. Now, uh, just like in notebook, we identify notes by their position in the in-memory representation. So uh, that's just a simple way uh, that makes sense in terms of our display to the user and in terms of what our app is looking at. So if the app knows that it has a, a given list, that's a, a live data list, and the user clicked on the you know, 118th element of that list because that was the top of their display, we can grab that note and return it. And if something goes wrong, we're just gonna crash. Okay, and so if we want to, let's say, update that note, the user is gonna say, hey, update, update a note at a certain position. Here's the new text. Here's the new set of pictures. We are going to grab the note at that position. We are gonna update the note's text, update the, the list, and then we are going to call the database to store this information. So, the idiom is similar to what we saw for notebook, but it's a little bit different. Uh, we're, we're communicating through live data. We're doing all our updates and then calling uh, the database helper. Similarly in create note, we get this information from the user, we create the note object, and then we call it to the database helper and the database helper even has to fill in one of the fields of the note object. 
uh, remove note at. Um, uh, here we are, uh, yeah, here we are uh, calling the database to remove the note, but what do we have to do before, uh, before we delete the note? Remember the note has, you know, the note has these fields and we wanna delete the note. So what do we have to do before we delete the note record? Do we have to send an email to the, to the owner? Do we have to look for naughty words in a text? Well, we gotta do something with this, this list of pictures. We're trying to delete the note. So uh, let's delete the, uh, the list of pictures. So we are going to get note from this position. And then, and then you know, dot, uh, picture UIDs, uh, let's do four each. Uh, so we're gonna grab a reference to our storage object, which you know we had a whole video about. And there is a very uh, useful uh, routine in there called delete image, and we're going to pass it the UUID string, which is the name of the image. So before we delete the note, we want to delete all the images. Now, you might ask, uh, what about referential integrity? Uh, and good, good thinking. So when we say delete image, the name of this routine is delete image, but is this uh, routine, when it returns, is the image deleted? The answer, sadly, is no. We have started the process of deleting the image. We have started the interaction with the database to tell it to delete the image. But that um, process happens in the background asynchronously. It might not be finished by the time we delete this node. Is that gonna cause a problem for referential integrity? No, because even if this note disappears, before one or a couple of these images disappear, that's actually still okay. Because once this thing disappears, it, the pointers are gone. And so there's now garbage in our storage directory and we want to garbage collect that garbage, but that's not a violation of refer referential integrity. The user is never gonna get a note that has some broken pointers into it. Uh, it's just that you know we might be uh, consuming more storage than, than we need to. Okay, um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's, all, that's all pretty good. You know, I'm, I am then now, I'm gonna uh, quickly go through um, these views and adapters because they're very similar to notebook and then I'm gonna do the image role in, a, in another video. So uh, this home, let's get rid of this. This home fragment is uh, very similar uh, to what we saw in Notebook. Um, this item touch helper, where we do swipe to delete, also very similar, and remove note at. This is, I think, identical. So, you know, good, good for us for having uh, good abstractions. Um, there's a bunch of navigation stuff in here, which is, which is really fun. That's also going to be, I'm going to split that off to another video. So that, that, that um, prevents these things from being identical, but uh, all this stuff looks uh, exactly the same. This uh, uh, attach note to the recycler view and, uh, you know, here we are uh, observing um, the list of notes, uh, which is the, the live data. <clears throat> Anytime it changes, we have to make sure that's not empty. Okay, so that's that's straight straightforward. Again, also looks similar. Uh, this image adapter looks very similar. We have this delete uh, pause. I think, um, yeah. Since since I made the last video, I, I sort of discovered there was a. This is a nullable, this delete pause is a nullable function. So it's a function whose value can be null. And when you have that, it likes it if you, instead of just using the brackets, it likes it, uh, uh, Android Studio likes for you to call this invoke. So the invoke method on a function uh, is sort of what you're, uh, you know, it's just what putting the brackets next to it means.
So a little bit of syntax. So we're testing whether this function pointer or function is null. And if it's not null, we are invoking it here. Okay, uh, image role we'll get to later. Uh, the, the edit, um, you know, there's, there's some fun navigation stuff here, but uh, all of this stuff looks exactly the same as uh, before. We have an image adapter, and if we want to delete something from the image adapter, we have to sort of cast it to a mutable, not cast it, we actually have to copy it, sorry, to a mutable list, remove the object, uh, you know, reassign it and submit that list. So, you know, this is all, this is all sort of identical. You know, um, we're encoding the position. Um, a negative one means it's a new node. Uh, uh, something that's not negative means it's uh, um, so it's not negative one means it's the uh, an update. So, so update create all all good. Um, yeah, um, <clears throat> and then the notes adapter uh, also looks very similar. Um, the a couple of uh, differences um, we decoded the JPEG on, on the main uh, uh, thread. Probably not such a great idea. Uh, and here we are calling Glide Fetch in order to fill that in, which is much better because Glide creates background threads to do all this work in. So good, good for Glide and good for us for using it. And you know we could we could backport this part uh, to uh, to Notebook. We could use no we could use Glide to interact with the JPEGs in Notebook, but we've used Glide for images so much that I actually wanted to show one case where we weren't using Glide, just to show you that like, you know, JPEGs are not, um, I mean, they're scary, but they're not that scary. Um, and here is uh, another uh, difference where we're, we're calling the view model to track the expanded state uh, because we don't want to have uh, um, um, a, local variable. And I'll describe that um, more detail in a, in a comparison, in the comparison video. Um, and the bind, uh, the bind function looks very, very similar. Uh, the date format is, is a little bit different because um, Firestore has a little bit of a date, date format difference from SQLite, not surprisingly. Um, right. And so that, uh, yes, that is good. That takes us to the end of this uh, whirlwind tour. Let's just see if there's anything else in the, in the image, sorry, in the view model, right? All the, all the images stuff is actually identical because that stuff. And then there's, there's some utility in here, nothing very interesting. Um, and up in the top, oh, up in the top, there's, yeah, there's, 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 no other interesting differences. So uh, that is your walkthrough of the FireNote app.